How's it going guys, Chris here, and today we're going to be checking out all the different weapons you'll be able to use in Atomic Heart's main campaign. There's 12 in total, all having their own unique qualities, uses and special attacks, ranging from melee tools, conventional guns, funky energy weapons, and of course, a few heavy hitting powerhouses. So the first weapon you'll be able to pick up and use is a bog standard fire axe called the Swede. Not exactly the fanciest thing in the world, but still a melee weapon with a decent amount of close range power nevertheless. As far as these kind of weapons go in the game, the Swede is a fairly balanced one, able to hack and slash through robots and mutants up close using that sharp blade. It's a bit heavier than some of the others, translating to slightly slower movement, but this bit of extra weight makes those swings a tad heftier and more damaging as a result. Not quite the strongest of the pack, but still a fairly nasty one for your enemies to get hit by. And despite practically being the game's starter weapon, it doesn't really have any obvious weaknesses, making it a decent tool to whip out when you're low on ammo, being capable of dealing with a lot of scenarios fine enough on its own. Of course, over time, as you upgrade the Swede, you can really help to boost its effectiveness, adding a bunch of extra bits and pieces to the axe to make it a lot deadlier and generally a lot cooler, improving on those stats and its overall performance. The Swede's got two different special attacks you can choose between, the first being a chopping blow, which can charge up to perform a downward slice, which, if you can time right, will hack into whatever's in front of you. And the second ability is the round attack, one that lets you spin around, sweeping the axe aggressively to potentially deal with multiple nearby enemies at once. Not a bad one to use when you're surrounded from all angles. One of the first firearms you get to use in Atomic Heart is the MP, aka the Makarov pistol. This thing might look a bit puny, especially in comparison to some of the other monsters you get to use later on in the game, but the MP is still a fairly reliable weapon with a good level of accuracy. Not a bad one for taking on some of the weaker enemies, nor popping off a few headshots over range. It's simple, yet effective. Not exactly designed to tear off huge chunks of health from those bullet sponge bosses, but still a handy backup weapon to count on when you're low on ammo for the other guns, or just want to quickly deal with a target over distance without having to put up with tons of recoil. The MP has got access to a fairly wide array of upgrades, sharing a lot of them with the other conventional guns, from extended magazines to muzzle brakes. Lots of different things to boost the stats. But probably the most interesting thing you'll find which drastically changes the MP's mechanics is a revolver type bolt frame, which not only changes the gun's appearance, but modifies it to fire out three bullets at once when aiming down sights, which then temporarily overheats the pistol, forcing it into a cooldown. A good way to deal higher amounts of damage all in one go at the expense of those shots having short gaps in between. Something that's going to have a lot more bang is the KS-23, basically Atomic Heart's short range shotgun. You get this pretty close to the start of the game, but despite being acquired so early on, it's actually one of the most devastating weapons out of the lot, blasting out slow but powerful shots to dish out high amounts of damage with every pull of the trigger. It's capable of tearing through metal and obliterating organic matter, having a somewhat generous, though still limited range, making it ideal for most close quarter fights, which in this game is something you're going to be thrown into quite a lot. Obviously, range aside, the KS-23 does have its flaws. It fires slowly, kicks like a mule, takes a while to reload, and at the start can only contain a few cartridges. Not great if you suddenly get swamped by enemies. Though as you upgrade the gun over time to boost its stats and improve on its flaws, this boomstick can become an extremely deadly and very useful tool along your journey, becoming something you can often depend on to get you through sticky situations, having all that stopping power at your disposal. Whether it's for dealing with a gang of angry robots quickly, or for knocking out decent sized chunks from a boss's health bar. A lot of the KS-23's main issues can be addressed using upgrades, giving you a lot more ammo to play around with, reducing that heavy kick, or even bump up the damage and fire rate even more. To make it even more ferocious, eventually able to be turned into a bit of a god gun, something you'll probably want to use a hell of a lot. Time for another melee weapon now. The Fox is basically an improvised blade type tool covered in nasty bits of metal, resembling a makeshift axe, sort of looking like something you'd see mashed up together in a post apocalyptic zombie game. Unlike the Swede, this axe is a lot lighter, therefore allowing you to swing it around faster and deliver multiple blows to nearby enemies in less time to deal quick and consistent damage, though albeit a bit lower than some of the other melee weapons, as you'd naturally expect with those swings having less momentum. This can make it a pretty reliable thing, great for players who prefer jumping from target to target quickly, or for the ones that are just simply rubbish at hitting enemies with the heavier weapons, down to them being much slower and trickier to time those swings correctly. 
Despite initially looking like something that's been put together on Mad Max's workbench, the fox's appearance can change quite a lot the more you upgrade it, becoming a lot cleaner and more industrial, with different metal parts, handle, and of course, a lightweight titanium blade, which deals more damage per hit. Unlike other melee weapons, it's only got one special attack which can't be changed, which happens to be a splitting blow. Basically a horizontal slice, which you'll have to charge up like a few of the others. Nothing too crazy, though at least it does charge up at a fairly quick pace. Easily one of the most reliable and often overlooked weapons in Atomic Heart, the Electro is the first energy powered weapon you'll be able to get your hands on. Seeming like a simple pistol type handgun on the face of it, though actually being something much more productive, possibly being the most efficient thing to use in most combat scenarios. Its fire rate is on the slow side, and its shots don't exactly rip through enemies, often needing a few hits to take them down, and at a first glance it probably doesn't seem particularly brilliant, especially in its base form. The reason why it's so useful is because it doesn't eat away at your ammo reserves, forcing you to scour the area for more loose lead. So if you run out of bullets with your other guns, the trusty electro pistol is pretty much always going to be there to back you up. Of course, it does use up your energy, indicated in bars at the bottom right corner of the screen, but this said energy does regenerate naturally over time, and by using other weapons and abilities. So although it's not an infinite pool, you still don't really have to worry about going a bit wild with it during a fight. This makes the Electro a really resourceful and dependable weapon, despite lacking a bit in the power department, though it only gets better and even more productive through its upgrades, not only using up less energy and generally being more effective, but also having a few really unique special fire modes too, at the cost of being able to aim down sights. One of these fire modes is the EMP Pulse, which charges up and fires out a huge blast, affecting multiple enemies in close proximity, dishing out high damage while causing robotic control circuits to temporarily fail. A pretty decent one for crowd control. The other is an energy vampire module, which goes hand in hand with the gun's primary fire, draining the energy from enemies to deal low but sustained damage, all while replenishing your own energy reserves at the same time too. You could argue that the Electro Pistol is borderline OP, being something so effective in several different ways, without actually needing any conventional ammo to be looted from the world. Definitely something you'll want to keep in your stash. How much more familiar weapons up next? The Kalash is exactly what you'd think it'd be, Atomic Heart's version of the Kalashnikov Assault Rifle, which a lot of you guys will probably know as the AK-47. Of course, there's a few modifications and tweaks to the overall design, gotta remember that the gun is set in an alternate reality after all, and this only gets wackier the more you upgrade the gun, which we'll talk more about in just a bit. But as far as it goes, you can expect the Kalash to perform in a very typical kind of way, firing out quick streams of bullets over distance, peppering targets with hot lead to deal sustained damage over time kind of what you'd expect an assault rifle to do. Definitely not the most eccentric gun in the game, but still something that offers you a unique yet classic way to dispatch of your enemies, with Atomic Heart not really having many of the fully automatic bullet spewing weapons to speak of, at least throughout the base campaign that is. You can expect that higher fire rate to translate over to more recoil, and you can also expect it to burn through ammunition at a faster rate too, but the Kalash offers something that the others don't, consistency over all ranges, making it a jack of all trades kind of gun ideal for pretty much all situations and against most of the enemies you'll encounter. Its upgrades are fairly bog standard, having a lot of similar ones to the KS-23 and the Makarov pistol, and most of them are just going to help to improve on those stats, give you beefier magazines, and generally make it more effective at doing what it does best. Another improvised melee weapon you'll be able to swing around and whack your enemies in the face with is the Snowball. This thing isn't actually a snowball of course, as the name might suggest, but it is in fact a medieval May style weapon, a strong pipe with several blades attached to form something you really wouldn't want to get hit by. As it turns out, your enemies won't want to get hit by it either, with the snowball packing the strongest punch of all the melee weapons per swing. Its base power is actually pretty crazy, capable of smashing up a lot of the weaker opponents in just a couple of hard smacks, and this is without any upgrades or modifications at all, which can potentially make it even more relentless still. The downside to all this immense power, well it's probably what you'd expect, as you're going to have to sacrifice a fair bit of speed in favour of having those heavier hits, with the snowball swings being much slower and trickier to land precisely as a result, often leaving you open and more vulnerable in close range fights, where the weapon is designed to be used. Upgrading the snowball gives you access to more blades for a higher damage output per hit, and just like the other melee weapons, it also does a few fancy tricks, with its standard heavy attack being a chopping blow, similar to the one the Swede has but more powerful and slower to charge. Though its more interesting attack is the battering blow, which spins those blades around and lets you charge forwards to ram into whatever happens to be in front, 
able to take down several enemies lined up together, shredding them up while dealing lots of damage very quickly. You'd expect a weapon called the Dominator to be a pretty ferocious piece of equipment, and although it's got some vital flaws, it can still definitely live up to that name when it comes to showing who's boss. Just like the Electro Pistol, the Dominator is another electrical gun which eats into your energy reserves, only this one's a hell of a lot beefier and far more destructive. It fires out electrified polymer projectiles in rapid continuous streams, which not only deal impact damage on whatever they hit, but also splash damage too, affecting other enemies that have huddled up close by. Being the wild, experimental weapon that it is, the Dominator's also got a built-in alternate fire mode that lets you charge up a super powerful shot and then blast a huge ball of electrical energy forwards, zapping anything in its path, able to wipe out multiple enemies in the blink of an eye. Of course, its rapid firing primary mode and that charged up secondary mode can clear the screen in a matter of seconds, but at a fairly hefty cost. The Dominator isn't very energy efficient at all, sapping away your reserves in a matter of moments. So having all that power does come with a big trade-off, therefore making it less reliable in a lot of combat situations, with ammo getting depleted in no time at all. Upgrades like the high intensity modulators can boost the gun's fire rate, making it even more deadly. Though to better manage your energy, you could always apply the impulse divider, which basically turns that rapid fall out of fire into a slow but steady buckshot instead, turning the Dominator into an energy shotgun style weapon. The next melee weapon in the list isn't exactly anything too funky, basically being just a blade on a stick called the Pashtet. Not a very complex thing on the face of it, but probably one of the more effective and easy to use melee weapons of the lot. One thing that separates the Pashtet to most of the others is that it's very lightweight, able to be whipped around really quickly in comparison, making a noticeable difference in fights. You'll be sacrificing some of that raw power for speed, but in a lot of cases this can be much more useful allowing you to slice and dice your way through waves of robots and mutants, skipping from target to target without having to worry too much about swings missing, leaving you vulnerable in between. This lets you spam your attacks and hack things to pieces, dealing an albeit smaller amount of damage per hit, but much more sustained, with melee combos flowing at a faster rate, also making those swings easier to time correctly. A reflex blade can be swapped over to in the upgrade section, giving the Pashtet slightly more power per swing. And as far as those special attacks go, you'll be able to perform the same sort of splitting blow that the Fox does, able to charge up a horizontal slice, or you can opt for the much more unique magnetic field generator, which lets you fire out the blade in front of you, which spins around and shreds up nearby enemies, giving you a tad more range and destructive power at the expense of it using up some of your energy. If you've ever played the Fallout games, then you've probably heard of a launcher called the Fat Man. If that weapon had a son, this thing would probably be it. Being weaker in comparison, firing normal explosives instead of mini nuclear bombs, though still having the same sort of purpose designed to turn your opponents into a fireball. The Fat Boy functions more like a standard rocket launcher, with a still high but not quite as ridiculously high power as its Fallout counterpart, giving your enemies a good blast but not much more. It is still one of the more punishing weapons in the game though, boasting a lot more damage than most of the others while also having splash damage from those explosions, which can take out several enemies at once. This makes it more of a situational thing, very effective against some of the bullet sponge bosses and gangs of mutants all congregating together, but a little bit overkill otherwise, easily destroying most of the weaker targets in one, but giving you other issues to contend with as a trade-off. A slow fire rate and limited ammo forces you to use the launcher wisely, especially with fat boy rockets being fairly scarce in comparison to other ammo. You probably won't find yourself relying on this one anywhere near as much as some of the other weapons in general fights, Though in the right scenario, that extra power just might come in handy. Upgrades allow you to fit the launcher with a revolver module, loading three projectiles at once, thus increasing ammo capacity and lowering the time taken between shots. Though if those normal rockets aren't quite enough, you can swap them out for trap mines, which do exactly what you'd expect. Plant traps for oncoming enemies to run into, blowing them sky high. Or you can equip homing missiles instead making the fat boy easier to use over range, with those rockets now locking onto their targets, making them a lot more accurate. Just like the snowball, another heavy hitting melee weapon comes in the form of the Svez Docker. Possibly one of the best rounded close range weapons, dealing some pretty serious damage without being too slow to swing around for consecutive hits. What you've got is essentially a wooden pole fitted with huge gnarly looking circular saws, something capable of pulverizing your enemies and turning them into scrap. Not quite the lightest thing in the world, with all that heavy metal weighing it down, but still something with a hell of a lot of power, making this Fez Docker a bit of a monster in most short range fights. Extra swords can be added to the weapon via the upgrade section, increasing that damage even further, 
Though when it comes to the special attacks, the Svez Dogger probably has the most unique and devastating ones of all the melee weapons. Having access to a really powerful charged uppercut, lifting weaker enemies up into the air and often killing them in a single blow. Though the really cool one is the Saw Dance, which lets you fire out those circular blades towards nearby enemies, which hone in to completely decimate them in a matter of seconds, chopping them into pieces while using up some of your energy. Though considering just how brutally effective this attack can be, that sacrifice will often be worth it. So last and certainly not least is one of Atomic Heart's most powerful weapons, a massive sci-fi looking railgun, capable of disintegrating your enemies and turning them into dust. This beast of a weapon pretty much deletes your opponents, using a supercharged shot that rips through anything in its path. And being an energy powered gun, you don't need to look out for ammo in the environment, making it a somewhat sustainable weapon, despite being one of the game's strongest. With that said, although you'll be tearing chunks out of your enemy's health, you'll also be tearing chunks out of your own energy reserves too. So just like the Dominator, the Railgun can often be more of a situational thing. Useful for when you need to deal lots of damage quickly, like against some of the tougher robots, mutants and bosses, but not so much for general fights with most of the weaker guys, being a little bit overkill in most normal situations. It's a cool thing to use, but definitely not the most efficient regarding energy consumption. Made even more problematic if you miss your shot, wasting a load of valuable energy in the process. The railgun can't be upgraded either, so there's no way to change how it functions or improve on its flaws. Though as a fun gun to whip out and destroy targets with ease, this weapon's got you covered. Just don't expect it to be able to take on too many at once, with those high powered shots being very limited. At least until that energy has a chance to charge back up that is. So those are all the weapons and guns you'll be able to use throughout Atomic Heart's main game. Hope you enjoyed the guide and maybe learned a few things. If you did, be sure to drop us a like and subscribe to see plenty more guides in the future. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll be seeing you in that next one.